Good evening, and welcome to the Niagara Broadsword Academy's History Supplement. I hope everyone's been keeping up with their weekly classes, making sure to practice their footwork, and of course, dressing in appropriate gear during class times to help maintain a psychological throughput in these socially distant times, as I am. Uh, I'm going to give a brief overview of the legendary fencing instructor, Domenico Angelo, who one might consider the original sport fencer. He trained swordsmanship not just as preparation for a noble's inevitable duel, but uh, rather as a gentlemanly exercise and a means to get fit, get active, and stay in shape. Because it's fun, uh, gives me energy, and it's a great way to stay in shape. Angelo the Elder was an Italian-born, French-trained, English-based foil fencing master. The son of a merchant, he expected to take over the family business, but after finding his passion in the sword and the horse, he was cut off and forced to make his own way in the world. He learned the art capital A, of fencing with the foil in the classic French style at the Royal Association of Masters of Yielding Weapons of the City and Suburbs of Paris, which was as prestigious uh, before the Revolution as it was a mouthful. He left Paris and moved to England chasing a fling with an actress that would quickly die. The fling, not the actress. And instead, at the age of 27, he married 17-year-old Elizabeth Johnson because history is... Let me double check. Gross. Not long after arriving in London, Domenico opened Angelo's School of Arms in Soho, established himself as an expert fencer, and even taught the Prince of Wales that would eventually become King George III. Angelo's school famously accepted female students, and he was a staunch advocate for women in fencing. That said, he himself issued the protection of a mask on the grounds of it being effeminate. Nobody's perfect. In 1760, Domenico handed over the Angelo School to his son Henry, taking up a position at Eton College. It is there, three years later, where he would publish The School of Fencing, featuring 49 engravings, drawn by Angelo's friend Jay Gwynne, of exceptional detail that illustrate classic positions from the style of which he was a master. It was a fairly conservative work, not pushing any great boundaries in terms of style, but rather carefully and precisely documenting the French form from his old school in Paris. The work was described as luxuriously published, uh, though I'm not 100% sure how much luxury you can actually put. Ooh. Okay, conceded. That is a luxury book. The clarity of style and precise, beautiful drawings found in L'Ecole des Armes caught the attention of Diderot and his co workers in France, who were currently working on L'Encyclopédie. Uh, they asked if they could use his text in their work. He agreed, and the entry under fencing in the encyclopedia is just his The School of Fencing with the pictures shrunk down, because why mess with perfection? The Royal Fencing Masters Academy was, of course, furious, because the French encyclopedia chose an Italian swordsman's treatise for the iconic fencing work, never mind the fact that he was French-trained and the work describes the French style. in French. After handing his highly successful school to his son, publishing his treatise, teaching at Eton College for decades, and uh, undergoing a number of disputes, quarrels, and misunderstandings with the head of the French Academy of Fencing Masters, G. Denet, Domenico Angelo passed away in 1802 at the age of 86. You may be wondering what the major contribution to broadsword fencing in particular is from this Italian-born, French-trained, English foil master is. Admittedly, aside from promoting fencing in general and accurate explanation of fencing in particular, his greatest contribution to Scottish broadsword fencing specifically was having a son, Henry Angelo, that we'll talk about later. Until then, stay safe, wash your hands, practice your footwork.